Saudi Arabia just announced a plan to build a skyscraper that will tower two kilometers into the desert sky, twice the height of the Burj Khalifa, with 678 floors, pushing technology to its absolute limit. Most headlines focus on the ambition, but the true shock is what must happen beneath the surface. To anchor this colossus, engineers are racing to invent foundations and elevators never seen before, battling forces that could bring the entire structure down before it ever rises. If something goes wrong, the world's most expensive vision could collapse, literally and economically, before our eyes. The secret engineering war now underway might decide not just the fate of Rise Tower, but the future of cities themselves. What makes this project so risky that even its creators can't guarantee it will work? Riyadh's desert floor is not just sand and stone, it's the first obstacle for Rise Tower. To hold up a structure weighing millions of tons, geotechnical engineers are drilling down to bedrock, driving piles as deep as 80 meters. Each pile is wider than a city bus, and hundreds will be needed to spread the load. Above these, a raft foundation of ultra-high performance concrete forms the base. This isn't ordinary concrete. It's mixed with steel fibers and advanced polymers, pushing compressive strength far beyond what was used at the Burj Khalifa or even the Jeddah Tower. The mat itself will be thicker than a two-story house, locking the tower to the earth. But the ground here is unpredictable. Layers of clay and sand can shift under enormous pressure, threatening uneven settlement. To counter this, engineers are embedding a digital sensor grid beneath the foundation. These sensors track every micro movement in real time, creating a living digital twin of the ground below. If the earth starts to shift, adjustments can be made before disaster strikes. The system is designed to detect changes smaller than the width of a human hair, feeding data to control rooms day and night. Every calculation, every pore of concrete, every sensor placement is a battle against gravity and geology. The stakes are clear. If the ground fails, nothing above survives. Only by mastering the first 60 to 80 meters below Riyadh can the Rise Tower begin its climb skyward. Moving skyward, the next battle isn't with the ground. It's with gravity itself. At two kilometers high, ordinary elevators quit. Their cables would snap under their own weight. So, designers are turning to maglev technology, magnetic levitation elevators that glide without cables, using linear motors like high-speed trains. German and Japanese vendors, including TK Elevator and Mitsubishi, are racing to adapt their ropeless systems for the world's tallest shaft. In prototype towers, maglev cars move both vertically and horizontally switching tracks at sky lobbies as if riding a subway in the clouds. Each elevator zone acts as a city within the tower, with express shuttles shooting up to transfer decks every 200 to 300 meters, then local cars taking over. This zoning keeps wait times low and ensures no single breakdown can strand thousands of people. But the real enemy at altitude is sway. Wind can push the top of a two-kilometer tower several meters off center. To fight this, engineers are embedding tuned mass pendulums, giant weights, sometimes over 2,000 tons, suspended at upper floors. When the building moves, the pendulum swings in the opposite direction, absorbing energy and calming the motion. Geometric setbacks and aerodynamic tapers further break up wind flow, reducing vortex effects that could otherwise set the whole structure into motion. Every system, from elevator to damper, is designed to keep people moving safely and comfortably, no matter how high the desert wind blows. Stepped terraces cut into the tower's flanks, each one a sky garden suspended hundreds or even thousands of meters above the desert. These are not just decorative. They break up wind, cool the air, and create pockets of green where people can breathe, meet, or simply look out across a horizon that stretches for 80 kilometers. The lead architect, whose early years were spent riding out earthquakes in Shanghai and sketching skylines in Chicago, calls them lungs for the vertical city. His vision is to pull nature up through the heart of the building, giving Riyadh's future residents a place to touch grass, literally, without leaving the clouds. But behind the gardens and glass, 
The real story is in the human effort it takes to build this high. Thousands of workers will live and labor on site, many of them crane operators recruited from as far as Bangladesh and the Philippines. Safety is not optional at these heights. In 2027, a crane operator faced a sudden sandstorm while transferring equipment, visibility dropped to near zero, but the site's AI-driven safety system halted all lifts and triggered an automated alert. The operator credits the system for saving his life. These platforms use real-time weather data, wearables, and predictive analytics to spot danger before it happens. Daily routines now include digital check-ins, multilingual safety drills, and instant translation headsets to bridge language gaps. Every step above ground is a negotiation with risk, and every worker's story is written into the steel and stone of the tower itself. For the architect, the gardens are a promise. No matter how high you build, the human element comes first. For the workforce, the promise is tested every day, as technology and vigilance work together to keep ambition from turning to tragedy. At the heart of Rise Tower's ambition is a $20 billion price tag, an investment on a scale that rivals entire city budgets. This isn't just about building higher, it's about transforming Riyadh into a magnet for global business, luxury tourism, and foreign direct investment. Saudi officials call it the centerpiece of Vision 2030, the country's sweeping plan to move beyond oil and remake its economy around knowledge, culture, and innovation. The expectation is clear. A new skyline will draw new money, new talent, and a new global reputation. But here's where the debate heats up. Environmental regulators are raising red flags about the tower's resource demands. Groundwater use for construction and cooling could strain already stressed aquifers beneath the desert. Critics warn that even the most advanced recycling systems may not offset the impact. Then there's the question of carbon. Skyscrapers of this size are notorious for their embodied emissions, the concrete, steel, and glass locking in decades worth of carbon from the moment they're poured and welded. Internal reports from 2024 and 2025 describe heated arguments between climate officials and the public investment fund over how much of the environmental impact should be made public. Some sustainability experts argue that mega projects like Rise Tower risk greenwashing, promising innovation while burying the true ecological cost. Supporters counter that only by building at this scale can Saudi Arabia leapfrog into a post-oil future, setting new standards for what's possible in desert cities worldwide. The stakes are more than financial. They cut to the core of how a nation chooses to balance ambition with responsibility. In 2026, everything hinged on a single wind tunnel test. Engineers gathered in Geneva to study a scale model of Rise Tower, pushing air at hurricane speeds. At 1.8 kilometers, the model began to vibrate in sync with the wind, a resonance event powerful enough to threaten the real tower's survival. For the chief engineer, failure wasn't an option. With just 48 hours before the next design review, the team tore into the models, running simulations and redrawing the upper floors. The breakthrough came with a sharper aerodynamic taper and a new system of integrated air dampers. By the next test, the deadly resonance vanished. The crisis didn't just save the project, it set a new standard for super tall design. Word of the near miss swept through global engineering forums, turning the chief engineer into a legend overnight. Around the world, city planners and developers are watching Riyadh with a mix of AWE and skepticism. The Rise Tower's two kilometer claim has triggered a new round of headlines some hailing it as the next leap for humanity, others quietly questioning whether it will ever leave the drawing board. In Dubai, economic officials have publicly welcomed the ambition, but behind closed doors, teams are studying the plans, weighing if and how to reclaim the world record. In China, patent filings for modular supertalls have spiked, 
with design studios in Shenzhen and Shanghai sketching proposals that could one day challenge even Rise Tower's scale. Yet for all the buzz, there's a lingering gap. As of late 2025, no peer-reviewed engineering study has been published for Rise Tower. Industry analysts note that most details remain confidential, and rival firms are left to speculate about what's real and what's promotional theater. The media narrative keeps shifting, one day calling it a revolution, the next raising doubts about feasibility. The only certainty is that the race for the sky has entered uncharted territory, and every city with global ambitions is now recalibrating what it means to reach for the clouds. Rise Tower, planned at 2,000 meters, over twice the height of the Burj Khalifa, represents the boldest step yet in Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030. The documentary has shown how engineers, led by Foster and Partners, must solve unprecedented challenges, from 80-meter deep foundations to maglev elevators and new sway control systems. Official documents confirm a $20 billion budget and a design that prioritizes both architectural innovation and human safety. Yet, the 2026 Geneva Wind Tunnel test revealed a resonance risk at 1.8 kilometers, prompting an emergency redesign and leaving critical questions about structural feasibility. As of now, there is no independent peer review of the project's engineering or impact assessments. International rivals in Dubai and Shenzhen are closely monitoring progress, highlighting a new era of global competition. The future of Rise Tower remains uncertain, but its ambition has already set a new benchmark for what nations envision for their skylines.